We are searching. We only have a small boat, not much time. And the Great Barrier Reef is vast. Coral reefs are magical places with an extraordinary diversity of plant and animal life that has evolved over the millennia. The most important coral species at any reef, its core, its foundation, are the boulder corals, the parietes. They are often large, round in shape, and pale in colour. Parietes are an important habitat, a large, solid substrate for creatures to attach to, burrow in, or take refuge amongst. Parietes are the largest of the massive corals and individual colonies can be up to 10 meters in, in diameter. That size, they're also approaching a thousand years old. Because these corals are the longest lived of all the corals and have a core of calcium carbonate that doesn't decay underwater, they represent a time capsule of the ocean's climate history. With a thin veneer of living tissue, old parietes expand at a rate of about one centimetre each year, with growth rings like tree rings, each representing one year of growth. So this two metre high coral could be 200 years old. Decades ago, these parietes were the focus of an extensive coring program to understand past rainfall and drought cycles. Originally this coral coring, they were interested in um, seeing the signal from the land, flood plumes. You can actually see them in the, in the layers of the coral. And so they were interested in very, very large corals and they drill a hole. And very, it takes a lot of work to put the divers down and drill the core. And that work then stopped in about 1990. And it wasn't restarted again until the climate change scare got going. And they went out and they re-cored them in 2003, 4 and 5. But they, they committed one of the cardinal sins of science. They changed the methodology. So rather than just using these enormous corals, they also used a whole lot of very, very small corals. For a good reason in some regards, because it's very easy to just grab one of these little parietes, winch it up onto the boat, you take it back to the lab, you chop it in half with a chainsaw and it's done, right? But it's a different coral. And what they didn't take into account was that maybe these little corals grow at a different rate to the bigger corals. We then filtered the data so we only looked at the gen genuinely the older coral uh, layers. And when you did that, this supposed uh, incredible drop in growth rate between 1990 and 2005 just disappeared. So what it was, um, you know, they, they finished um, one methodology in 1990, another methodology in 2005. This supposed fall was just the change in methodology. So you've been very upfront about all of this, Peter. You've said that if they go back to the old methodology and they call the corals that are currently there, mm -hmm. there will be no reduction. Yep. That's your hypothesis. That's my hypothesis. There will be no, no reduction in coral growth rates. That's correct. Whereas they would be predicting there should be a 30% reduction. And we just got to go out and find out what's the truth here. I mean, there's no excuse for not doing this. So following Peter's recommendation, I put a team together to find the large parietes. My name is Dr. Jennifer Morohassi, and I'm an Australian biologist. My dear friend Rob McCulloch has chartered a boat for us, Kayama. Rob has been navigating Great Barrier Reef waters for more than 30 years. In those days there was no GPS's and, and just paper sounders and things and so it was a big adventure. Assisting is first mate Wizzy Wyatt and with second mate and chef Dennis Remedio and the skipper, there is 125 years experience navigating coral reefs between them. We have just six days, and my hope is to survey inner, middle and outer reefs all the way out to Myrmidon. We departed Cairns on the 28th of November, 2020. There are storm clouds on the horizon. I actually have no idea if we are going to find any living parietes. Also on board is marine biologist Stuart Ireland with 30 years experience diving and filming the Great Barrier Reef. 
Of all the reefs I've dived on the Great Barrier Reef, this is the first time I've been looking specifically for parodies. The first of the inshore reefs fringes High Island. Sean Frichette helped me get ready. He is also very experienced and passionate about coral reef conservation. I grew up in Monterey, California. Um, I have extensive diving experience. I went through a commercial dive school uh, about nine years ago. Worked in the Gulf of Mexico for the oil companies doing deep sea diving for about four years. Um, I think I have over 2,000 dives under my belt, many of which are on various reefs around the world. This is an inshore reef and it's been raining. Visibility is not so good, but it didn't take too long for us to bump into our first parietes. The parietes that we measured were on average three metres wide and two metres deep. Suitable for coring to reveal the climate history of this coral reef. Then I found a peg, perhaps marking one of the corals that used to be cored. That was such a good dive, absolutely extraordinary. So, so, so many parietes, just so many parietes. Whoa. I just remember saying to Peter, we need to go back and see if the, the parietes are there. And he said, we, um, we're never going to find the same ones. And I said, well, let's just go back and um, find some parietes. And for the last two weeks, everybody's saying, but they don't call the parietes anymore, Jen, because they're all dead. And did we see any dead parietes down there? Well, there were a couple that, that were decayed, but 90% of them were just huge and so, so, so healthy. I was amazed at what we found down there. There was parietes everywhere. It was parietes heaven. We got a good night's sleep, tucked in behind Russell, one of the islands in the Franklin group. We awoke to a rainbow. We scouted around the fringing reef of Normanby Island. We were looking on Google Earth, trying to find the exact one that was uh, about a hundred year old core. And I'd say that it was somewhere around here. So we're looking for the biggest parietes that, that we can possibly see, dead or alive. Many of the parietes have decaying tops, perhaps because they are exposed on each low tide at this shallow reef. So why did you agree to come on such a small boat for a whole week? I heard there was a great indigenous cook coming on board. <laughs> Shorts can be very fussy actually, but... Uh... Vegemite is off the table. I'm just trying to adapt. <laughs> uh, that's definitely not the only reason I agreed to come out for the week. Um, I am very curious to see firsthand the condition of the reef. Um, I've been made to believe via media for the last 12, 15 years that the reef was dying and on its way out, and I had to come see firsthand. Increasing temperature, there's no doubt, parietes grow about roughly 10% faster for every one degree increase in temperature. So we should, with, with climate change, either anthropogenic or otherwise, we should see an increase in growth rate. But there are other measurements that sh show that as the ocean acidity or the pH changes, it might slow the coral growth rate down. So there's these competing things. And we're going to see, if we can get this data taken right up to 2020, whether there has been a, a reduction in growth rate. My prediction is there'll be none. So why are we only going slow, Rob? <laughs> the two types of skippers. The ones that have hit the reef and the ones that are going to. After carefully manoeuvring the boat, Rob gets us in nice and close where we can jump in and hopefully find more parietes. Again, it didn't take long to find them. They were everywhere. Of the parietes we measured, the average width was four metres and average height two metres. We found more pegs and we recorded the GPS coordinates of these largest parietes. We even found a parietes on its side, probably pushed over by large waves during a cyclone. Well, reefs generally are often subjected to uh, devastation periodically, especially the inshore reefs. Uh, you've got cyclones that usually there's several every year that cross the reef and leave a trail of wreckage on the reefs behind them. <laughs> oh, good time. A lot of diversity one, down there. And this one, right? it's a potato cod. Did you? Yeah. We spent the night behind Dunk Island. The next morning, Sean reflected on yesterday's corals. 
so we came across some massive parieties yesterday. They were big and beautiful and healthy for the most part. I saw very little bleaching yesterday, but there was at least a little bit of it. This morning we're going to head east to our first mid-shelf reefs. We expect better water quality and I'm so curious to know what the parieties look like out there. We're on the northwestern end of Britomart Reef, in the, in the lee of the reef itself. So we're going to scout along the leeward side, looking for bommies in two to three metres of water. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, plenty here. I was looking for one specific, very large parietes that the scientists used to core. Labelled BRT 01A, the core starts in the year 1621 and ends in 1983. So, if that coral is still alive, it is nearly 400 years old. After an hour searching, we could only find plates, not parietes. And many of these plates were dead, covered in algae. And bleaching has been beaten up massively. It's a natural phenomenon. The same coral that would bleach at one temperature in the south of the Great Barrier Reef um, you know, won't bleach for two, two degrees hotter somewhere north. They are able to adapt by just changing the zooxanthellae that live, lives inside them. The specific GPS locations for each of the cord corals isn't available, just the location of the reefs. There's about 18,000 hectares of reef out here at Britomart. That's over 34,000 football fields of coral. Finding that one 400-year-old coral is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Stuart and I decided to do a second dive on that particular reef yesterday in search of more parieties. Um, even though we did not find any of the parieties, there were some amazing canyons and a ton of biodiversity that really led to an amazing dive. And I think I was so intrigued and fascinated by the amount of life on that dive that I kind of overlooked what was dead and, and from previous bleaching. So yeah, we saw some a couple really cool white tip reef sharks on that last dive and they were hanging out close to us. It looked like uh, they had just started hunting for the night. We didn't actually find any parieties. I'd love to, to stay here and, uh, and keep looking. It is a huge reef, but we just have to keep moving on. The long journey to Myrmidon, chugging across deep blue lonely ocean, gave us a chance to not only recharge ourselves, but also Stuart's camera batteries, and to give hard-working mate Wizzy a chance to recharge the air tanks. How have you found working on this boat compared to working on those charter boats? Oh, well, this one here has been pretty difficult because we've got guys that want to dive every day, get up early from five o'clock in the morning, and I've got to make sure the tanks are all full. That's diving from, say, eight o'clock in the morning through to 8.30 at night, doing night dives, having a good look at the reef. Wizzy and Dennis threw a line in to catch some dinner. So what could Des do with this? Uh, nothing. You're not going to give him a kiss, though? Eh? No. Nah. Way too sharp at that. We made it to Myrmidon, on the outer edge of the Great Barrier Reef. There is a weather station here, collecting recent data on climate change. The water is crystal clear. Visibility is extraordinary. 
We can see so far under the water. After a lot of swimming, Sean found and photographed our first parietes. Only a little one, maybe 20 years old. We measured some parietes of a reasonable width, but they are not deep. They would not be suitable for coring. We moved to another site. Stuart and Sean jumped in on snorkel while Wizzy refilled our air tanks. The current was so strong. I stayed on the boat and filmed with my drone. Stuart filmed many healthy plate corals. He saw a white-tipped reef shark winding its way up a ridge. But no parietes. We need to find parietes. There are records of parietes caught here at Myrmidon. Could these parietes now all be dead? Is that maybe why we can't find them? I was beginning to feel more desperate. So far from land, in a small boat, and Rob was worried the weather was about to turn. This was our last opportunity to find parietes at Myrmidon. We decided to move the boat again, more inside and to the southwest, between the bombies. We jump in for the last dive. I am feeling so anxious, hoping to find parietes. They've got to be here. Another reef shark. That shark, it's showing us the way. It's showing us to a garden of parietes. To the most magnificent specimens, deep and wide, that will be perfect for coring so that we can know the climate history of this coral reef. The parietes are of two different types, helmet and domed, and in different colours, beige, light blue, dark blue, and an olive green. A goniopera coral in the same family as parietes, also large and a round shape. Its large polyps can be seen extended and feeding. This fast-growing branching coral has very long, delicate stems that end in fluorescent tips. Everything is so magical in this garden of parietes. We found loads of parietes on the last dive site and there was quite a variation amongst them um, with colors and size. We saw some massive ones and some what appeared to be juveniles, I guess. Sean found a peg. We are not the first to document this coral garden. The scientists need to come back to recommence the program of coring the large parietes so the methodology is consistent, so we can know the true climate history of this reef on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. Because we are almost out of air, we have to return to the boat. Wizzy, Dennis and the skipper are waiting for us. The sun was going down for that day, and also on our adventure. If we really care about something, we should want to know everything about it, and in detail. If we really care about coral reefs, we should have information on growth rates, species diversity, and coral cover. I would like to create an inventory a list of the largest of these massive parietes from inner, middle and outer reefs. We need a more formalised system where you know, if AIM says that the coral growth rates are collapsing, we need to employ some other scientists, not Jennifer and you guys going out there on the smell of an oily rag. We need some scientists going out there to just check to make sure they did it right. And if they did it right, great. Corals, growth rates diving, um, we've got a terrible problem, we've got to stop oil production. And by the way, if, if when this uh, calcification work is finally done, as it certainly will be, if it definitely shows that we're down 15 to 30 percent in coral growth rate, I will be the first person to say we've got to stop coal mining. So we just got back from our expedition down the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we made many stops at various reefs along the way. Uh, despite the narrative that I've heard for the last 10 years about the Great Barrier Reef being dead and dying and on its way out, that was just not my experience. Um, 
Overall, I was genuinely pleased to see the condition of the corals and the amount of biodiversity on the reefs. I would argue on the flip side of the coin, we did see some signs of devastation or previous impacts that were either from bleaching or maybe the crown of thorn starfish. So despite my overall good opinion of the condition of the reef, I would argue that it's by no means off the hook and definitely still needs protections in place. And after speaking to Peter Ridd, I would say that he's accurate in the fact that we need to have further research done on the reef so that scientists can have a better understanding of what's going on out there. We made it all the way to Myrmidon on Little Kayama and we found the parietes. Just maybe, Peter Ridd is right, maybe with increasing temperatures the corals are growing faster or could it be slower? We can only know if the scientists recommence the coring one thing is for sure, our climate history is locked up safe within these old corals, the parietes. As we leave Myrmidon, there is a boomerang cloud in the sky. I so hope to return to this magical place, out on the edge of the Great Barrier Reef. for being a part of this adventure. To keep up to date, visit the Institute of Public Affairs, ipa.org.au forward slash Great Barrier Reef.